All right, everyone, welcome to this training night uh, for two new community solar markets. One's kind of half new, one's brand new. Um, we're excited. Today is the date of April 2nd. It's it's uh, We're excited because it's not April 1st because no one would believe us uh, about all these new markets if we told them it was April 1st. So we're excited we got an extra day. Um, we're super excited to share with you actually a couple really cool things that you're going to see tonight. Um, we're going to learn about uh, two utilities uh, that are entering into the fray for community solar in the state of Massachusetts, uh, which is Eversource um, and Wameco, uh, which will kind of go through the details of those markets. National Grid's already been uh, on for probably about three weeks now. Um, and then we're going to switch gears and go over in across the country, westbound, into the great state of Minnesota, which is going to be a brand new market for us. So for this, I'm going to introduce an amazing human being that is a technological wizard. We're so, so grateful we have him on board. Um, this gentleman, Phil, uh, the, the last name is, um, I, I always mess it up. It's, it's uh, give it a shot. Tell tell us what your last name Santino is. Santino Chetto. Santino Chetto. Yep. Right. All right. So, um, Bill has been working tirelessly uh, on all these, at the same time, all these solar trainings, but also working on streamlining things for advisors to have access to information quickly and easily uh, with this, the latest and the greatest uh, real-time information at your fingertips. And I'm so excited because I got a little bit of a preview, but you're going to get the idea of what he's been working on in the background as we go through this training, I can I can tell you, if you've been through these trainings with a couple different states, you're going to see major advancement tonight in how we're going to train on this and the tools that are at your fingertips uh, when we are finished here. So, Phil, with that, I'll kind of let you pull up your screen and and introduce us to this uh, awesome awesome new technology that we have. Yep. All right. Let's get into it. Um, so thanks for coming, everybody. Um, all right. So in talking about community solar, we're going to talk about Massachusetts right now, right? As you guys know, we've already been in Massachusetts for a little while, but we're expanding our reach in Massachusetts. So who is Think Energy? A lot of you guys know this already, but we're a forward-thinking retail energy company making clean energy easy, affordable, and accessible to everybody. You know, leading player in the industry, Think Energy is all about leveraging innovation, technology, and our proprietary sales force, the uh, Think Plus, to really revolutionize how people think about energy consumption. And part of that equation is Think Community Solar, right? Think Community Solar is a totally unique way where customers can receive guaranteed savings on their utility bills, right? And Think Community Solar is the preferred partner to, to subscribe and manage projects for IPPs like Arcadia, like Syncarfa, like all these other players that we're bringing together. So it's one place, one organization, universal access to community solar. And that's one of the things that we're really excited about tonight is, yes, we're expanding in Massachusetts, but we're launching an entirely new state of Minnesota. So in Massachusetts, we were... Uh, originally focused on national grid or uh, just one particular utility provider. Now we're going into three. We're going to be in national grid, NSTAR, and Wamiko. And there's some little differences between the two, but uh, the big thing is that national grid, we've always had lots of open availability there. Now getting into uh, NSTAR and Wamiko, there's the opportunity to increase the savings that customers are getting through LMI. And that's through this concept of green zones or our two meters. And we're gonna really make this process very simple for you guys to see whether or not somebody is gonna qualify for a green star green zone in those LMI projects. But you see, we've got 34 active community solar farms that we are currently subscribing customers to. So there is there is a lot of availability. There, there is an abundant amount of availability throughout Massachusetts, and you can kind of see where all the different community solar farms are across there. These are all live projects. 
that we are allocating customers as quickly as you guys bring them on. The enrollment process is, is pretty straightforward, right? So just want to make sure that everybody's comfortable speaking about the shared benefits of community solar, that it's good for customers, good for the bank accounts, good for the environment, good for the local economy, and absolutely great for your guys' business, right? You're selling a product that's guaranteed savings that makes you money up front. It makes you guys money over time through residuals. And make sure that, you know, as you're talking with these customers, you want to make sure they have access to the utility account information and their bill information. Explain why uh, payment credentials will be required in dual bill markets. And, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. And let them know that they'll need a working phone number, email address, and, you know, an electronic device to, to sign up. Now, the one thing that's new since we're bringing on the IPP of Arcadia on board is the benefits of LMI, right? So these are just designed to help families that fall within specific income limits that they can, and that includes, you know, housing, food, or financial assistance. Uh, these incentive programs help elevate the amount of discounts that they can find. And so in, in Massachusetts, we're, we're kind of making it a little easy on you. In Massachusetts, if customers reside within designated areas known as green zones, they get to receive these benefits and you're able to check the eligibility pretty simply. So in this presentation, there's a link. And if you click that link, it's going to load a map. And this map you can kind of interact with. We can go and look. But up in the top, there's a, a little search bar, right? We can actually just type in an address, and I'm just going to go to Worcester and see that this address falls within a green zone. So great, this customer should go sign up. Since they're in a green zone, they're going to qualify for LMI, which is absolutely fantastic. And you guys will be able to like navigate around, see, type in the address. The really cool thing about all this, though, and the cool thing about this presentation is this presentation I'm giving you guys is embedded directly in Think Success. So you can kind of make it bigger. We'll make sure that this is a feature post on Think Success uh, later on this after or later on this evening. And you'll be able to go in, review the deck, interact with the green zone, and everything that you're looking for related to Massachusetts and community solar will be directly on this page. And um, yeah, so it's pretty cool. We're very excited about it. Phil, I just have to stop you there because this is this is a game changer. Like for for kind of what we've been dealing with um, is, you know, people asking, hey, where can I find that? Is it up to date? Is it is it real time? Is it you know, am I getting old information when I go to this? No, this is this is the big catalyst change for me is that when corporate gets updates they can go into Think Success. They can update slides on the fly through a static link. And when you go retrieve the information, it's already done. So there's no more like sending things to someone that might be old. This is this is this is a the new way of doing business for us in a field, going to think success for everything as it starts to mature and Phil starts to really work out all this all the stuff that we have getting it implemented even like the presentation and things like that just having this one-stop shop for all the latest and greatest information that's real time i think is a game changer it really is yeah and this will always be updated you guys are wondering whether or not there's availability for particular markets you can go straight to the massachusetts community solar page you'll see the presentation you'll see where the farms are you'll see where there's eligibility and if you want to go check on green zones, load it up. It renders on your phone beautifully. You can type in addresses and find it. And as you get more comfortable with it, you can even start to look to see the different utility zones that are within that area. So we're going to be building lots of cool tools for you guys to make it just easier and easier for you guys to get the information at your fingertips and not have to go searching for it. That's incredible. So let's get back into the presentation. So we were talking about the green zones, right? Those are great. Makes it super simple for people to qualify for those additional discounts. And so what's the enrollment flow look like? It's similar to what it looked like before, right? Customer enters in their zip code. They go and they select 
their their product that they're looking for. Um, then they complete the enrollment flow form and they finalize all the details for their enrollment form. And then they go ahead and they they enter in their financial information, right? Their payment information. So National Grid is ACH only. We're working on bringing credit card to National Grid as well. That Those are projects that we're fulfilling through Sincarfa. And right now they're only accepting ACH, but we are working diligently on bringing credit card there. But in NSTAR and Wamiko, you can do credit card and credit card has no fees. So a lot of people like that benefit. Um, and so the big thing to, to think about is once they get their, their payment information from here, customers will be placed in the pending status and think Community Solar will update them when they get allocated to their farm, right? And so we, we kind of go through that allocation process and the, the personal, your PCR, your personal customer report in your web office will be updated to reflect all those changes. Um, and now we get into kind of the allocation process, right? Uh, we validate their accounts. We, we start looking at what it is that they're needing to be allocated. We find the capacity. It says allocation may take up to 12 months, but we've got a lot of projects. We are very excited about the amount of abundance that we have in these community solar projects. It's going to take one to two billing cycles. We're going to get really, really quick with getting these people on these community solar farms. And that's that's what we're really focused on. Now, the big friction point that you guys will encounter with customers is the fact that Massachusetts is still a dual billing environment. It's not like Illinois or Virginia or New York, where it's utility consolidated billing. So they're going to get a bill from the utility and they're going to get a bill for their community solar credits. And it's going to look a little bit different depending on the utility that we're talking about. So in NSTAR and Wamiko, uh, here's a copy of an Eversource bill, right? And so we're seeing here that there are net metering credits of $25.24 in, in this particular sample bill, right? And they'll be able to see those charges and then they're gonna wanna line those up with their invoices. So in NSTAR and Wamiko, we're all about Arcadia. So they're gonna get their Arcadia bill. This is just a sample bill. And basically they're gonna pay Arcadia for those community solar credits at a discount. And that those discounted community solar credits are going to be reflected on their Eversource bills. And then when we get into national grid, again, here's a sample national grid bill. You can kind of see where the discount is applied, $166.17, these transfer credit charges, that's their community solar credit. And so then you see that their amount due here is just a total of $28.88. And so they'll be paying in the case of national grid, Sincarfa through solar gardens, that $165.81, but their total due is $149.23. So that's, that's the discount that they're getting on their utility bill by purchasing those community solar credits. Pretty straightforward. Very straightforward. Um, and, now, and Bill, I do have a question. Um, I'm looking up at the top left yeah. and there's a logo there um, in, in the question section. What's that? Oh, this one right here, this new, this is our new Think Community Solar logo. As you guys kind of see, we've got Think Plus with the plus sign. We've got Think Energy with that energy sign. Now Community Solar, you've kind of noticed that there's a lot of yellow in these boxes. Artistically, I love it. Our designers have been working hard at trying to create some brand cohesion as we're starting to build things up. So this is the new Think Community Solar logo. Love it. I love yeah. it. I, I absolutely love it. And for those of you, and we're going to get into the Massachusetts or the Minnesota training, but we kind of maintain this kind of icon through the Think logo here. And you see in the front of our community solar presentations, like I, don't know, I get giddy about really clever. Yeah, I, I, I love it. It just nice. makes it look really professional and state of yep. the art. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. It turned out really, really nice. Um, so let's, Questions around Mass. Why don't we open it up for questions around Massachusetts before we get into Minnesota? Yep. If you have a question, folks, all, all you need to do is just unmute yourself. Um, and you can raise your hand. I think uh, is probably 
the best thing. So Kenneth, Kenneth Glodier, what do you got? No, it's Matt. Ed. Oh, Matt, how are you, buddy? I'm good. How are you? Uh, so being a mask here myself, um, my question is, I was, uh, I'm on, you know, I don't know where I picked this up, but mask at some point will go consolidated billing and correct me if I'm wrong. When they do go consolidated billing, people will be changed over and that may be six months a year. Um, is that, is that true or false? Is that something I can, you know, the savings may be different when they do go consolidated building, you know, is that something I can tell people like, Hey, I know it's a little bit of a pain in the butt, two bills, but here's the deal. You know what I mean? Well, what I would say, Matt, is uh, what I've been saying is like, I know Maryland, I know New York, New York started out at 20%. Maryland started out at 20%. Um, but as we get, Maryland has got officially notification from the uh, P Public Service Commission that starting in 2025, it's going to be consolidated billing. So what was four years ago, 20% is now 5%, right? Um, in New York, same thing. So you can't say, I know that this is going to happen, but there's a very good indication from other markets that are more mature that when it goes consolidated, the savings probably won't be as much as they are today. Now, when they sign up at 10%, they're getting that 10% regardless to what happens in the future. So there's kind of that like, you know, get on the farm now, even if it's dual billing, because you're you're going to get that 10% for the whole 20 years. If it lowers, you're you're still going to be at 10%. So that's that's something I, I would feel very comfortable saying to people. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a thing. You We've seen this in New York, right? As these community solar markets start to mature, you start to see reductions in discounts. And we, we see it across the board. And that's part of the reason why it's actually a really nice opportunity to get in when the discount's good. Um, and then you're locked in for, for 20 years. And so no matter when they go utility consolidated, you still get that simple experience and all that increased savings. And, and one more real quick, in, in the LMI for uh, an Eversource is really doesn't, it's not really LMI. If it's green zone, it, could, it might not be someone low to moderate income. Am I? It, it might wrong? not be, but R2 meters in these green zones are how they're defining LMI eligibility. So if they're in a green zone, they're, we're going to automatically allocate them to an LMI project if we have one available to help increase that discount. Okay. And that's why this kind of tool right here, being able to look up the address, like you can load it up on your phone, you can click the dedicated link and make it full screen and navigate around. Having that to be able to like, look as you're talking with people, see if they're within one of those green zones and be like, yeah, if I were you, you're, I would go and sign up right now because as programs, so if they're in one of those green zones and there's LMI eligibility, like we're going to get them allocated to an LMI project as quickly as possible. Yeah, to me, it's a marketing so what? campaign too, because you could take a screenshot of this page right here, send it to someone and say, hey, by chance, do you live in any, in any of these green zones? Does your house anywhere? And then... You, you say great news for you. You qualify for community solar um, for LMI, you know? Yeah, it's you can even send them a link. Yeah, exactly. You can have them put in their address if they don't want to give it. I'm sorry, so, I have another question. Oh. I have a question. Uh, well, we're going in, we're going, I, I, there was someone named Quan Massey up next. So I'm going to kind of go by the, the, the hand raises as they come up um, in order. That's okay. So, Quan, uh, if you could just unmute yourself and shoot away. Yes, sir. Good evening. I just wanted you to explain the um, green zones again. And the LMI is 25%? No, the LMI. So, the green zone is for uh, Eversource, right? Or NSTAR, whatever you call it. Um, the only availability that they actually have in that utility is LMI at 10%. So if you're not in a green zone, you can't enroll on a farm. Okay. So 
uh, that's that's just for Eversource. The other two utilities, National Grid and Wameco, are open and LMI. Is that correct, Phil? Yeah, so National Grid is only open. There is some LMI availability and Wameco. And uh, right now, Massachusetts is in the process of increasing discounts for LMI based on IRA and everything else. So getting them allocated to those LMI farms and capturing that LMI eligibility, that's why we have 10% plus. There is the opportunity for an increased discount. Yeah, 10% would be the minimum amount. Of but discount. 10% is the minimum. Okay. Thank you. All right, Sharon, you're up next. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. I can. Uh, great. I am dead smack center in Eversource country here. Um, help me figure out how do we find these people when you live in a county in an area that is very upper income? Is there going to be an open enrollment eventually? There are Eversource for Eversource, you mean? Yep. So cool. if you have some addresses, just because you're there is an upper class group in there. If you look up the addresses using this LMI green zone tool and they fall within those jurisdictions, it doesn't matter if they're upper class or if they have an R2 meter, they have an R2 meter, they would also qualify for this. Now, there are also some areas at Wameco where uh, forever source that would also qualify because there is some open availability there as well. So what I would just encourage is like, look up the address see if they have an R2 meter and you can tell that by looking at their bill and get them to, to go ahead and, and if you find them in the green zone or they have an R2 meter, I would sign up for Eversource. We'll get you them know, out. On that, uh, you know, um, on that same note, one of the things that I think is a really great tip is whenever I'm talking to someone, I just ask them, take a picture of their bill, send it to me, let me see if you're qualified to get onto community solar. Let me see if you're qualified for the program, because if they send the bill to you, you have a lot of information with that bill. You can see what the rate is that they're paying for their electric supply. You'll often find a lot of times that someone might be on a variable rate paying far more than they should. And that's a conversation that you can have with them about their energy supply as well. Um, but you can also get the information you need to be able to see if they qualify for the LMI and Eversource. Uh, it's just getting that that bill from them can really lead to great opportunities and great news for them. And it gives you kind of the, the leverage of being able to get back to them with some type of great news. So I like that, the strategy of just getting a bill from someone. Thank you. Yeah, and once you get that bill, just go ahead and type it at the address in here and, and see if it qualifies. All right, who's next? All right, so next is going to be Steve uh, Briggs. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, Phil. So um, just a real quick question. So if, if we're signing up somebody that is a, they have rooftop solar, and they still have an offset and we're signing them up for uh, community solar. I heard that um, when the billing is changed, there's a potential that they'll lose their net metering credits. Does any anybody know anything about that or? I'd have to look that. into whether or not they're gonna lose net metering credits, but just as a general rule of thumb, we, we tend to try to, shy away from rooftop solar customers just because there's not a large value proposition for them to sign up for community solar plus having rooftop solar but let me let me chat with our operations team and i'll i'll find that out and i'll let ed know and he can reach out to you same thing with um if we're just switching their meat their meter too so like you know if we're signing them up and they're on you know eversource and we're signing them up on on think plus um you know, is there is there a potential for that to happen? No, there should be absolutely no no uh, advantage that the utility has in that regard. Okay. No. All right. Thanks, guys. You bet. Um, N1VL, now it's your up. 
Steve. Yeah, good, good evening. How uh, are you? Super. I have a quick question for you. Uh, I'm disabled, and I'm on the Cape, and I have a lot, and I have uh, um, people, we, we, we find each other, us disabled people all the time. We grow, grow, grow. So I talked to a lot of them today. My question is, um, and I'm kind of embarrassed to say, because I was a working person, but now that I'm disabled, Eversource takes a third off my bill already. Is that going to be any problem? I am income challenged. Uh, I'm embarrassed to say that. But a lot of my friends are too. And we have private residences. And I was looking closely at this map. And a lot of us live in this area. Uh, just because we get a third off already from Eversource, is that going to hurt us? So uh, that's a good question. Yeah. So, and, and you're, you're on some form of budget billing, correct? Um, no, I, uh, I'm not on budget billing. I just get a third off my bill. Okay. Um, in this particular instance, if you're already paying or reduced, so you would sign up for community solar and you would be getting a 10% off those, those credits. Uh, and then that was going to, that would be offsetting your assistance program. In this particular instance, I wouldn't be signing up for community solar because it's going to be more expensive for you. If it's a third, if you're saving 30%, then I would stick with the utility program and not go down the route of community solar. Now, a lot of us, where the cutoff is for us is 54000 at the house. Mm -hmm. So that's, so in my case, that would be more me and my wife both. As long as we make less than 54, we qualify. Yeah. If I, if I go 55, I don't qualify. Yeah, as you and I know, but you, as we both know, fifty-five is not enough to live off either. No, so not. so I should probably ask around where the people are. I guess uh, their what their net net money is. Yeah, to get out. Okay, because this is a this is a good thing. I I believe it's a game changer. Also, yeah, and us people that are disabled, a lot of us do have. Some of us do have money. But we're tight. We're, we're tight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Let me I'm, let me I'm do some additional. Let me do some additional research and see if there is a, a good way to tackle the problem of trying to get additional discounts, even though you're on assistance. Right. Right. And I'll, I appreciate I, your time. My my initial thought is that you're better off staying as long as you're staying under that 55 mark. You're probably better off there unless there is a loop that I can kind of take a look at. And yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at that and I'll, uh, I'll get with that. And then he can kind of let you guys know. Yeah. If you were consolidated billing, absolutely do it. But yeah, absolutely. Two separate bills. The majority of it's going to be with uh, Arcadia or, you know, and in this case, Arcadia, um, it's going to make your utility bill lower. And only getting a third off of that is going to be less advantageous than staying with the whole bill and getting a third off the whole thing. Correct. So, yeah, hang tight on that. We'll get answers for you on that. Thank you, sir. I My pleasure. Thank you. All right. We're going to go to Judy now. Two, two more questions, Judy and then Vincent. Hi. Um, question. So... I understand the green zones and that you don't have to be LMI if you live in the green zone. Can you be low to moderate income outside of the green zone and qualify? Unfortunately not. In in Massachusetts, all they have right now are green zones or R2 meters. If they have an R2 meter, they qualify. Or if they're in the green zone, they qualify. Outside of that, there is no other criteria in Massachusetts. Okay. And will Massachusetts ever source open up eventually, or we always be dealing with green zones? No, we're, we're working on trying to get uh, open capacity, but this is, this is a regulator 
thing. Um, they're very focused on LMI and Eversource right now. So we're we're working through, there's a couple of IPPs that are working on open projects. There is some availability in Wameco uh, for open. It's not a ton, but there is some, I think maybe four or 500 spots. Um, but yeah, we're, we're working on it. Yep. And we'll make those we'll make those uh, updates available to everybody I instantaneously. Like when we when we find out, we'll make sure that Think Success email goes out to everybody. Keep them in the loop on any kind of changes. Yep. You know, listen, folks, we're in a very fluid state with community solar uh, ravaging around the country. Uh, brand new. Uh, it's exciting, but it's also right now clunky and. Think Energy is trying to do our best in kind of standardizing a lot of this, becoming the central hub for customer acquisition. So we're going to get our hands on a lot of projects um, that are going to be very exciting. So, you know, we're just kind of plugging in. Plugging in is the best thing that people can do uh, to get the latest and greatest information. I mean, think about it. We've got so... We're going to take one more question for Massachusetts, then we're going to pop over to Minnesota. But we got Minnesota. We've got, uh, by the way, Massachusetts is launching tomorrow, just FYI. Um, and then on Friday, we're going to be launching Minnesota. Um, and it'll go live in the card. I don't know exactly what hour it's going to go live uh, tomorrow or Friday, but they will be live on Minnesota on Friday and Massachusetts uh, Eversource will be live tomorrow. Uh, and then next week is going to be Colorado and DC. And then we're working on getting, uh, Oregon up and running, uh, New Mexico, as you guys know, and which is, I'm really excited about New Mexico when that gets up and running. Cause that's going to be utility consolidated billing. Oh. Uh, um, so it's, that's going to be really, really exciting. Um, but, and then we are looking at Q1, of 25 for California getting up and running. And so our big play here is get every independent power producer, get every aggregator together, get everybody. So we have a simplified experience where customers can sign up and we, we go and we get projects and we get those customers on projects as quickly as possible. We don't care who's producing the power. We're going to find the opportunities and get them for the customers. That's awesome. All right, Vincent, you're our final question for Massachusetts. All right, better be a good one then, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. Got it. Um, I was I, I got part of it answered. Can if they qualify for R two meter and in green zone, can they also qualify, uh, for the electric supply discount as well? Uh, great question. Great answer. Yes, absolutely. And is there a, is there a, with Massachusetts launching tomorrow, is the bonus in play for the, you know, 10, 15, yep. 30 customers? You got it. Okay. So, Great. so a cool point on that, a little follow up on that. If anybody has uh, enrolled national grid customers for the last couple of weeks, do they have a head start? They have a head start. As far as I'm concerned, we're launching Massachusetts tomorrow. So anything that happened prior to tomorrow, is technically tomorrow. That's freaking amazing. That's amazing. So if you're already doing some work in uh, National Grid, guess what? You got a head start on everybody. Yep. Get to Puerto Rico, folks. Get to Puerto Rico. It's it's going to be the trip of a lifetime. Um, you could be on my golf team and then you'll win. Yeah. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> Ask Mike awesome. how he feels about that. <laughs> That's why he's not on here. We can talk smack. That's right. That's right. I've uh, we've done two golf tournaments, Mike and I, uh, and both of them I've won. So I have a very distinct impression that I'm going to have the deck stacked against me next time. <laughs> that's awesome. All right. Good stuff. Great questions on mass. Um, and like I say, refer back to that uh, that training there. Um, we'll have this recording out there. But the, the deck is done um, for you guys to to look at and get used to and guess what you guys got the link so there's a link for uh it's in chat right now for massachusetts feel free look around explore uh we'll get this posted on think success here shortly uh so that way it's accessible right now it's a private link but all of you guys have access to it 
So now let's get into Minnesota. Minnesota is pretty straightforward, to be honest. Um, very similar process. Um, we're not going to go through all this. Um, it's dual billing. Right now, it's only a dedicated 5%. It's not a, a ton, not as much availability uh, in Minnesota. We've only got 19 active community solar farms. So like, you know, it's, it's a good amount, but not a ton. And so really, we're just working on expanding into other states. It's only a 5% discount. It's not very large in Minnesota, but it's it's guaranteed savings and we're working on building out and this is all all of it's open, right? So there's no real LMI process. It's go, it's sign up, it's get your community solar credits, dual billing, 5%, similar process um that we would go. This is fulfilled through Arcadia, so there's no credit card fees. Uh, so you get the 5%, plus you get to pay with your credit card without the fees and get, you know, if you got a Capital One or something else where you're getting extra bonus points, it's it's kind of great to have. And it's it's a nice way for us to start expanding into, into Minnesota. Like that's that's really it. That's the nuts and bolts of it. And so in, in Minnesota, we got Excel. Um, and you can kind of see here that this particular bill had an $84.30 credit. Um, again, this is just a sample, but you're basically paying Arcadia. There's the 5% discount, you know, it saves them a little bit of money. And if you pair that with no fees on the credit card, it's, it's not a bad deal. It's not a bad deal. And we're working hard on getting more capacity. And there are some conversations that are be happening around LMI and some other programs to start to increase those discounts, but we're, it's a process. Community solar is is growing and it's growing rapidly. And we're on the forefront of absolutely every market that is expanding. You, you know, I'd say, you know, as a general rule of thumb, long term, I'm a huge advocate for diversification of your business. And as you grow a, a network marketing model, if you grow a business, you're going to have people that come into your business uh, 10 levels deep, 20 levels deep, 100 levels deep. And all of a sudden, call it someone five levels deep, says, oh, I was born and raised in Minnesota. I know everybody there. I was, it was amazing. I'm going to, I'm going to blow this up. Your business can't help but grow into every one of these states long term. And there's going to be people that sign up in this business in Minnesota in the next couple of months that have the opportunity to just completely own the market out there. So you know, expanding into new markets is really exciting. And it just gives us the ability to talk to more people that are really professionals in this industry that know that the more states we can open into, the more diversified their business is going to be, the more rock solid their whole entire future is going to be. So I love opening new markets. Someone, if you have any connections to anybody in Minnesota, reach out to them now. Because there's chances that the people in Minnesota know people in Illinois and you know people in all these other markets that we have. It's a ricochet, uh, you know, back and forth. It's it's amazing to have. Uh, we, I, you know, I've been in network marketing for 15 years in the energy space, and I've never been able to even talk about Minnesota. Uh, you know, it's amazing. I, that Minnesota, New Mexico, Colorado, Oregon, never been able to talk about these states. So. This is what is so exciting for the prospects of our future. It's just going to keep growing and metastasizing in a very good way. And let me say this too. I uh, So I run marketing product in all of our platforms at Energy Well, and I am actively looking and building more and more products across multiple states. Like, so as we start building in these new communities, like, I'm going to make sure that there is the right product for us to expand in those markets. Community solar is my focus right now because it's a good product, but there are lots of different energy products that we can get out there. And building the foundation, building the network in all of these new states allows us to be like, hey, we've got the sales force. They need the products. Go build the products and I will build the products. I love it. I love it. So at this point, we'll open up for uh, some Q&A um, in, uh, in the Minnesota land. Um, 
If anybody has any questions. Or anywhere. I mean, yeah. Minnesota is yeah, pretty yeah, straightforward. Really. If you guys got any more questions, uh, go yeah. for it. JB, what you got? You talking to me? <laughs> of course I'm talking to you. I thought we were on a, a first initial basis. At this oh, point. we are. We are. <laughs> JK. Anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have a few brand new Minnesota advisors on this Zoom right now. Sure. Could you um, go over the extra promotion? Because I'm not sure they're aware of that. And because they're yeah. brand new with the community solar markets, with the extra money and earning the trip. Give me one second. And I had a slide build out. Before. It's very exciting for you folks in Minnesota. Um, yes. If you get busy in the next 30 days. Uh, it's starting on Friday, because remember, it's not going to launch and open up until Friday. So you have all day tomorrow, essentially, and, and Thursday to kind of prime the pump, as I like to say. Reach out to people saying something big is going to happen on Friday. Get as many bills as you can. That's my suggestion is send me your bills, send me your bills, send me your bills. Let me see if I can get you qualified for this government program, the state program called Community Solar it's amazing. You're going to save 5% off your delivery transmission and, uh, and supply. Um, so that's, it's exciting. So let's, uh, let's get those two days and make the most of them as Phil. I know, I know what the, the promotion is, but I'd rather have you guys see it, um, in, in black and white. So you can kind of take a screenshot or find a way to get back to it. So you know what it is. Yeah. So the way that the promotion works is once, uh, once you enroll, uh, 10 customers, right? So if an EA enrolls 10 qualified customers, they get $25 extra for each one of those customers in that state. So, you know, this is a state by state launch. So if you were to go out and get 10 community solar customers in, in Minnesota, you're going to get an extra $25 per customer. Then as soon as you go past that 10 customers and you go to 11 customers, now you're going to get $50 for every single customer. So if you go from 10 to 11, instead of getting $25 per customer, you're gonna get $50 per customer. And that goes all the way up to 25 customers, right? And so basically with 25 customers at $50, you're gonna extra $1,250. And then if you get to 30 customers, we're gonna give you $100 per customer so you have the potential for 30 customers to do $3,000. And every customer thereafter, you're going to get an extra $100. And so the beauty, though, is also you can exchange those 30 customers for that $3,000 to give yourself a trip for two to Puerto Rico to come being on my golf team and, and win a cup, which is super exciting. And then every single customer over that 30 is just an extra hundred dollars directly into your pocket. And so we do that for 30 days with the start of every single market. So starting on Friday, when we launch Minnesota, you're going to have 30 days to get as many community solar customers in there as possible. And if you can get to that 30 mark and get that hundred dollars per customer, it's, it's fantastic. But if you break 10, 25, 30, that's how you kind of think about it. And then Massachusetts, right? There are people that have been already enrolling customers in National Grid. There are people that are already breaking the 30 customers in National Grid that are already going to get $3,000 and automatically qualify for the trip to Puerto Rico if they want to come. It's really, it's really awesome. And on top of that, you get the regular compensation. Yep. Um, so that's, I think Minnesota is an $80 market. Yeah. So we're talking, you know, 30 times eight, that's another what? Um, 30 times eight. Well, wait, 30 times 80. Give me a break here. 24, uh, 20, 2400 extra dollars, right? Not too shabby. I mean, come on. That's like you get to go. Well, first of all, Puerto Rico, if you choose that option, which I highly recommend it, you get uh, airline credits and you get credits when you're down there. So yep. that's a free trip all in. You got an extra 2,800 bucks to buy some or $2,400 to buy some you know, good stuff down there and just have some fun. Yep. Great, great combination. So we got it going in Illinois, Virginia, Maryland, Rhode Island, starting tomorrow will be Massachusetts, 
Then Friday will be Minnesota. And then next week we got DC and Colorado. Yep. Hey, if I know people in DC and Colorado, start start priming the pump now, you know? Um, so uh, JB, does that answer your questions for now? It sure does. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Ed. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Phil. No worries. All uh -huh. right. Uh, Kenny, I, or no, wait, I'm sorry, Matt. I think this is you again, right? Sorry, one last question. So I'm playing around with that app with the green zone and I see some territories that are national grid. Can you just explain that one more time? They're in green, but they're national grid. So what does that mean? So uh, there is no, there is the possibility of having LMI. So these are state defined green zones. So the state has defined where the green zones are. National grid, we don't have any LMI eligibility right now, but when we do have LMI eligibility and national grid, they will qualify. Okay. So just because it's green doesn't mean they can get it. Yeah. So you gotta you have to look at this kind of like this slide. What is it? Slide four, where it shows utility and the type where we have open LMI and then open slash LMI. You have to community solar is a little complicated, right? So we, we have to think about what is the availability of the product. And that's, that's based on open versus LMI. And so national grid, we don't have any LMI eligibility right now. As soon as we do, I'll also let everybody know, but I built the tools so that way you can see if people are in green zones. And then if you click this little ellipse over here, you can actually look at the different utilities as well. And so you see the overlay of here, okay. let me make this bigger so everybody can see. All right, so here's all the Eversource utilities. So there are some green zones that are outside of the Eversource, but there just isn't any available product right now. Got it. Makes sense? Perfect, thank you. Cool, and hopefully you guys like it. It was a little tricky. I think it's I think it's the future. I love it. I think it's going to make uh, everybody Try to just make things easy on you guys. It's that's the key. I was telling Phil, he's a master of simplifying the complex, right? So the simpler we can make this for new folks coming in, because everyone has to understand that this is a burgeoning uh, industry. It's it's just getting started and it's going to grow across the country. We're actively looking to lead the charge that's our goal as a company we want to be the leader in community solar management right so uh when you're when you want to take that leadership position you have to bring in fragmented pieces together to kind of figure out the standards moving forward and we're doing that so uh making it simple for people to be able to get the right information is critical like i say i go back to this all the time New people, experienced people, it doesn't matter. Get a copy of the bill. There's there's low-hanging fruit out there. There's mom, there's dad, there's sister, brother, aunt, uncle, cousins, friends, close friends. They're the kind of people that you could easily go to and say, hey, do me a favor, shoot me over your bill. Let me take a look at it and see if I can get you qualified. That way, you're not in like a pressure situation. Uh, you actually can take your time. You can look at it analyze the rate that they're paying for, you know, electric. And there's so many benefits to doing it that way. That way you can, you're not under the gun. You're not under the pressure. Um, so that's just my tip, a continued tip. Um, all right, Mark Milstein. Thank you. Uh, I just want to clarify. Uh, I'm pretty sure I know the answer, but in Minnesota, there is no free energy in Minnesota, correct? Because we're not, we do not serve uh, the energy market there. So anybody that signs up for solar, there they there's no benefit for free energy in Minnesota. Correct. That, that, that is, is correct. The the only way to okay. get free energy um, is to have, to have to be an electric supplier, electric supply customer. Now, let me throw this one at you. If I'm an electric supply customer in Maryland, and I have I came from Minnesota, and I have five family friends out there. I could sign up all five of them to give me five customers for my free energy club. But the only way to get free energy to begin with is to have an electric meter enrolled for supply. Okay. Now is there, there's so is there any benefit for a solar customer in Minnesota? Cause I have a few for them to go out and bring in other customers or 
basically there's no benefit to them to do that other than to, to help me. No, as an 100%. EA. They, 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 you know, here's the beauty of it, right? It's, 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 um, it's, uh, whatever, $49 to become an energy advisor. I'm in Minnesota. Right. Um, I become my own customer. I sign up as an advisor and I sign myself up as a customer. I'm getting 40 of that okay. next Friday, right? So I'm already getting 40 bucks. And if I do it in the next 30 days, I'm getting another 25 on top of it. So I've paid for becoming an advisor just by enrolling my own meter. And then every other customer that they go out and get, they get $80 on um, for getting community solar customers. And then if they know people from other markets, you know, you can sign up in any state as an advisor. So I would talk to these right. people seriously about becoming advisors, getting them to enroll themselves. You're still going to get half, right? But now they're going to have the opportunity to go get customers for themselves to make income. And that in turn helps you get income plus move you up and rank with customer points and stuff. Okay, very good. Thank you. Hey. You betcha. Great question. All right, uh, Mr. Briggs again. Thanks, Ed. Um, in terms of points, so is it one point for each community solar customer? Or is it two or? I don't know. Phil, do you have that question? Uh, let me look it up real quick. For Mass or for what, let's see, uh, customer points for Massachusetts, uh, Open is two, LMI is three. Okay. And that's a promotion that goes through the end of the month? Yep. And then uh, for Minnesota, open is two. Bingo. Thank so, you. Yep. Think about that. If You know, it's so funny. If somebody goes out and gets 30 customers in their first 30 days, that automatically makes you a regional energy advisor that's another $200 bonus on top of everything else. So, um, and then at that point, if you got 30 customers, you'd be at, you know, 60 points. Um, you know, now you're that much closer to the 200 point to be a senior energy advisor. So it's, it's, it's high cotton time. Awesome. Well, Phil, you have done a spectacular job, Captain America, once again. I love what you're doing. I love the whole think success is going to be the re receptacle for all things. A lot of amazing things you're going to see happening with think success. I just love the thought of having the PowerPoint presentation done just like we did it, where you just pull it up. If you want to download it, you can, but you could just pull it up on the internet and you could just do a presentation with the latest and greatest slides all the time. You're not going to have to find out where the new slides are or anything in the back office. It's really, it's going to change uh, and, and make things so much more efficient. And uh, it's going to empower the advisors to really go out there and tackle this business. Yeah, I just posted the Minnesota uh, training deck up in there too for you guys to take a look at. So Awesome. Enjoy. So, um, so same bat time, same bat channel. Next week, we'll be going over the Colorado and DC markets. Yep. It's going to be another very exciting um, period of time for our history. And then we'll get to eventually the last two sluggers out there in the West. Um, but it's exciting. It's very exciting, Phil. Thank you. Thank you everybody for coming on and giving us your attention and learning tonight. Uh, this recording will be made available as well um, tomorrow. And um, have a great night, everyone. God yep. bless. Take care. Cheers. See you, everyone. Bye. Great job, guys. Nice job. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice job. Cheers, guys. How many people are on there?